So I woke up this morning and I made my way over to the window. I opened it up and I had a look at this view for a while. And as I watched the sun come up over the forest, I thought to myself, even though it's not a tall mushroom season and it's the middle of winter and there's really not an awful lot of fungal activity going on in the forest right now, I wonder how many powerfully immune-enhancing anti-cancer medicinal mushrooms I can find out there this morning on just a short walk through the woods. And so that's exactly what I decided to do. So I made my way downstairs, I woke her up, I got myself ready, and we were off. And as we were walking into the woods, I was thinking about the dramatic global increase in immunological health challenges and the, the serious increase in pretty much every single type of cancer, and how most people's first port of call when they receive news that they have an illness like this is to really just follow the conventional protocol from A to Z, whether that's chemotherapy, radiation therapy, or... Uh, surgery, pharmaceutical drugs, or a concoction of all of them. And I'm not devaluing these modalities of dealing with this problem because there definitely are appropriate times when these measures need to be taken. But my point really is that there is so many other approaches that we could follow first before we take such extreme measures. There's many preventative measures that we could take. And also even if we follow these conventional therapies and ways of trying to recover from an illness like cancer, we can still use a lot of very, very powerful natural methods as an adjunct therapy in order to minimize the consequences and the negative health impacts of these very severe conventional approaches to dealing with this health issue. Because a lot of the time, it's not actually the illness that kills the person, it's actually the the therapy, the, the conventional therapy and that person's inability to actually withstand the, really the brutality of that therapy. So we hadn't even been walking for five minutes before we came across some of these birch polypores and interestingly the porous underside of these mushrooms was intact, they hadn't even released their spores yet which is really quite rare for this time of year, normally these mushrooms would be somewhat spent by about late autumn uh, so these ones were obviously quite late to start so that basically meant that these mushrooms were totally fresh and ripe for picking and using and making medicine with now these mushrooms have a very effective immune modulating property to them uh, they create in the body what's known as a host mediated response which is actually what really all of the top medicinal mushrooms do so in an adaptogenic sense, they basically have the ability to make your immune function increase or decrease depending on what you need personally. Now, they also have a lot of anti-tumor properties to them. Uh, the betulinic acid that these mushrooms are pulling out of the birch tree and concentrating in their fruit bodies has actually been shown to be very, very effective in treating melanoma and certain triterpenoids within these mushrooms are actually very uh, powerfully anti-inflammatory to the skin. So amongst being a successful um, herbal medicine for a number of different types of cancer, this mushroom in particular seems to be very much uh, focused on skin cancer in particular. Now this herb is also very antiviral and has shown in studies uh, a lot of success in treating HIV. It's also very antibacterial and has been used for a very long time as a very effective anti-parasitic mushroom for intestinal parasites. In about another minute's walk we came across this rotting tree stump that was covered in turkey tail mushrooms. Now admittedly uh, these mushrooms were not really in their prime, they're somewhat out of season and really you, you would want to aim at picking them much earlier than this. But turkey tail are very widespread, they're very common, they're not at all hard to find. And they're really loaded with those beta-glucan polysaccharides that really offer that immune modulating effect. Now they're also very, very powerful anti-cancer and anti-tumor mushrooms. Uh, they affect a wide array of different types of cancer. 
they actually have a particular type of polysaccharide called PSK that's actually been extracted and approved by the pharmaceutical industry as an anti-cancer medicine. So this is a very rare occasion where natural herbal medicines are actually being approved by the pharmaceutical industry due to their effectiveness. So this mushroom is also very antiviral, it's antibacterial, it's loaded with antioxidants, and it has a chemoprotective function in the sense that even if someone is going through chemotherapy or radiation therapy, this mushroom actually has the ability to protect healthy cells and protect the integrity of those cells from actually being degraded and damaged by the chemotherapy and by the radiation, the exposure to radiation. So this makes an absolutely amazing adjunct therapy if someone really isn't left with any other choice but to go down that conventional route. And a really interesting uh, testimonial for these mushrooms actually comes quite poetically in the form of Paul Stamets' mother. Paul Stamets obviously being the world's leading mycologist and probably the man who's the most knowledgeable on medicinal mushrooms in the whole world. Now his mother is really quite old. She developed breast cancer not at all that long ago and she was too old to have surgery. She was too old to have uh, radiation therapy and so all that they could do was put her on some pharmaceutical drugs. Um, and she actually took large doses of turkey tail mushrooms in conjunction with this pharmaceutical medication. And she's now completely cancer free. I think the doctor that saw her said she had the second worst case of breast cancer that that doctor has ever seen in decades of, of treating people. So it's a real testament to the absolute power of turkey tail. Because his mother was basically served a death sentence. She was told that she had no more than three months left to live. And this was a few years ago. So uh, I'll actually put a link in the description box to what I think is Paul Stamets' most recent TED talk where he talks about Turkey Tail in depth and he also talks about this situation with his mother and then he brings her up on stage and introduces her so I'll, I'll put a link to that video in the description box. So we continued on our walk and it really didn't take more than a few minutes before we came across a flush of these velvet shank mushrooms which again are very powerful at enhancing immune function and they have very powerful anti-cancer properties again but specifically in regards to lymphoma with these mushrooms. Now literally just a few trees away we came across a number of these jelly mushrooms that again I don't know if you can see a pattern forming here but these this particular species are again very much enhancing immune function and they carry as we would expect a very powerful anti-cancer property, but this mushroom in particular has a very potent effect on sarcoma specifically. Now all of the mushrooms that you've seen in this video, I literally discovered all of them on a short walk round the woods this morning, so it's really easy to come across this kind of extremely powerful and effective natural medicine, and even if you don't have access to uh, you know, a large expanse of forest so many of us live close to parks or just to small patches of woodland that are quite likely to host some of these very profound medicines now if you want to know more about any of the mushrooms that are in this video in particular i've already made much more detailed videos on each of these previously so if you want to know more about them just go back through my channel and have a look but really what we find is that the forest is actually one of the primary main climax ecosystems of this entire planet. This is where the natural life of the earth reaches its evolutionary climax. And so it makes sense really that we would find the most evolved and advanced and highly intelligent and beneficial life forms residing in a forest ecosystem and actually making up the, the fabric and the framework of that ecosystem. 
So I would strongly advise getting out into the wilderness or into any kind of natural expanse of land that you have near you and becoming more familiar with it, connecting with it, becoming more intimate with it and learning more about it. So obviously we've just covered medicinal mushrooms in this video and there are a wealth of other very uh, health promoting and life enhancing medicines that you will find growing in the wild but medicinal mushrooms in particular tend to be very much more concentrated in their beneficial constituents than other plants and herbs and so forth so you know you're only really gonna know which mushrooms are which, which ones are possibly dangerous, and which ones are actually very beneficial, which ones are edible, which ones are medicinal. You're only going to know this by actually taking the time to get more intimate with your natural surroundings and actually connect with the earth more in this way. And even if you don't have access to any kind of natural environment around you, it's still very much a worthwhile endeavor to learn more about these mushrooms, learn more about the beneficial effects of them. Uh, you can still learn to differentiate between the different types of mushrooms and the different properties they have, and you can start to use them into your, you know, incorporate them into your daily life. You can use them as whole herbs, you can use them as concentrated powdered extracts or liquid extracts, and you can see for yourself the kind of benefits that you're going to obtain over time from doing that. And this really is so much more than a drug. We really don't want to resort to taking these measures for our health when we're already sick. This is really um, a kind of missing food group in, in reality because a lot of what we can get from medicinal mushrooms just simply is not available in food, in conventional food, in organic food. These things really do not possess a lot of the highly advanced intelligence and beneficial medicine that these medicinal mushrooms have to offer. So, you know, whatever your situation, it's definitely worth incorporating these magical substances into your life as much as you can. And, you know, really, these things are growing in the wild in, as I said, climax ecosystems, the most highly evolved uh, environments on this planet. And this is really something that we've been taught over generations to fear. We've been taught to be very afraid of the wild and very afraid of taking anything into ourselves, into our bodies that comes from the wild because it's very dangerous and we don't know the consequences. And in reality, this, as I've said, can all be completely sidestepped by the simple willingness of wanting to engage in your natural environment, to really familiarize yourself with it, and ultimately acknowledge yourself as part of that ecosystem and in turn allow that eco ecosystem to acknowledge you as a part of itself. Now there are obviously many other amazing medicinal mushrooms that you could use that we haven't talked about in this video. There's reishi, chaga, cordyceps, uh, maitake, shiitake, lion's mane. There's just so many. Uh, some of them are much more broad spectrum in their benefits than others. Others are a bit more specific, but there really are just some absolutely incredible medicinal mushrooms that, as I said, we didn't mention in this video, because this video is really just uh, just to simply illustrate in even the most dead of seasons, we can go outside into a natural forested environment and we can find some very, very potent and powerful medicines still available, still ready to use. So just as we were finishing our walk, we came across a really quite magical display of quite an old flush of turkey tail mushrooms that were growing in a very unusual and very... Um, irregular way. I've never ever seen them growing like this before. I mean, as you can see in this particular photo, they were kind of growing almost like they were skewered on a kebab stick. And then you can also see in these photos that rather than growing in their usual fan shape, these turkey tail mushrooms had actually chosen to grow widthways down the length of basically of dead branches. And it really gave the impression that 
they were kind of taking the place of what would have been leaves had the tree been alive. And this really makes me wonder if the mushrooms are not choosing to grow in this way for no other reason simply because they, they just can. They're just choosing to do it for fun, almost. It's almost like a creative tendency of, of the mushroom mind, like an artistic expression. And as we know, artistic creative expression is really reserved for the most aware, consciously aware, evolved and highly advanced species.